All right, so my apologies for the delay between video uploads. It's been very hectic here with new equipment and everything. Hope you're all staying safe wherever you happen to be in the world right now. And uh, thank you for all the continued support. Um, I never thought when I started this channel I'd be getting the reach that I'm getting. And it's always great to hear people contact me and say, you know, your vid videos are useful, your videos are helping me out. So thank you very much for that. So a few weeks ago, I did a video of a playthrough of basic operation of the Talos, including recording selected area diffraction patterns with a flu cam. A few people pointed out that I didn't show doing this with the SATA camera. Um, at the time, I didn't really have a good procedure for doing it with the SATA camera. When we had the applications training too, we really weren't able to produce any nice diffraction patterns with the SATA camera, or I shouldn't say produce, but record. But uh, I didn't give up on it. I spent some time working on it, and uh, I was able to devise a procedure for recording some very nice selected area diffraction patterns like the one you're seeing right now in the video, which was taken from a single crystal of silicon. And so I will go through the procedure that I used to obtain this very nice diffraction pattern with the SATA camera on our Talos. So just one last thing to mention, if you have not already watched the video on basic operation of the Talos, I suggest you watch that first. I will put a link in the description below. And without further ado, we will go ahead and get started. So the first step is setting up your microscope conditions. So you could do this at any voltage that you have the instrument configured at. The SATA camera will work well for any of those. I'm using 200 kilovolts here. So I'll start by applying the 200 kV conventional mode FEG register. Then I'm opening the column valves. My specimen's already positioned and the most important thing after that is using a higher numerical value of spot size. So I'm actually setting this to spot size six. And from here, it's just performing basic alignment of the instrument. So first thing obviously is going to be setting the specimen at eucentric height. And so again, that's hit that eucentric focus button, then use the Z axis buttons to Minimize the contrast so you can see how that's working right now. This is critical in operation of the microscope period. And then after that, we only need to do a few basic alignments. So the first one is the C2 aperture. And I don't need a high indicated magnification for this. I'm at 14,000 indicated. And so I'll check aperture alignment again of the C2 aperture. Again, I'm using the 50 micron C2 aperture, which is the smallest. So you can see here, the C2 aperture alignment is good. The next thing you'll check for is, is the beam looks circular? And it does, obviously. So I don't have to worry about correcting any Condenser astigmatism. Next thing we'll do is balance the pivot points. So we'll take a look at the X pivot point. So you don't see any separation of the beam. I'm just going to throw this off here. So again, you can see what it would look like, right? There, the beam separating. Just use your multifunction knobs to minimize separation. Do the same thing for the Y pivot point. Again, not really much there. I'm just intentionally throwing it off. And that looks good. And then the last thing is the rotation center. I'm adjusting the flu cam contrast here just to make that a little easier to see. I'm going to use the surface of the fib lamella here. So the sample is a silicon single crystal with film on it. I'm not concentrating on the film. I'm actually concentrating on the substrate for doing the selected area diffraction. Again, doing the rotation centering here though. You don't really see any movement. I'm throwing this off just so you can see what it is, look what it should look like if it's off. But again, 
You really don't see any image movement. So I just adjusted it back and then we're good to go. So the next thing we're going to do is set our incident beam so it is illuminating with parallel conditions. So for that we're going to head into diffraction mode. You can set the camera length whatever you want use the magnification knob. You notice of course we're in diffraction mode. I'm going to bump it down to 660 indicated. You may need to play around with your flu cam settings here as you're doing this. And then I'm going to insert an objective aperture. It doesn't matter which one you insert when you do this. It just matters that you can see it in the pattern when you insert it. So I'm using a larger one. And now what I'm looking at here is the edge of the objective aperture. And if that's sharp or fuzzy. So you can see now I've defocused it. It's fuzzy. You want that edge to be as sharp as possible using the focus knob. And that looks good. At this point I can retract the objective aperture. And then I'm going to adjust my flu cam display here. And now it's kind of hard for you to see, but I'm going to use the intensity knob on the left hand panel. And looking at that direct spot in the middle, I'm going to focus that so it's as small as I can possibly get it. And now I have a parallel beam. Change my flu cam setting back here. The other thing you can do if you notice that the direct spot has some asymmetry, you can use the diffraction stigmators. These typically don't need a huge adjustment unless they are grossly, grossly off. But again, what you can do is just, you can activate the diffraction stigmators, then use your multifunction knob to make these spots as circular as possible. Again, usually this doesn't need a tremendous amount of tweaking, but that's what you would do. Use the diffraction stigmators in diffraction mode. Sometimes it's helpful to use the focus knob to defocus the spots and then Stigmate, just make sure you refocus the spots with the focus knob when you're done. Then you can head back into SA mode once you've set up the parallel beam. So now we're back in SA mode. When you get back into SA mode, do not adjust the intensity knob. You can use the trackball to shift the beam around, but if you adjust intensity, you no longer have a parallel beam, which we just set up. And my indicated mag is not terribly high. And so now we can select an area to collect the diffraction pattern from. So I'm actually going to focus on that confluence of what are called bend contours that I just pointed out. Because I know right where that confluence of bend contours is located, I have pretty good zone axis alignment. Just adjusting the flu cam here to show that and then I can go to my apertures panel and I can insert a selected area aperture. If you're working with a single crystal you want to use one of the smaller two. Uh, I'm using the 40 here. You can use the 40 or you can use the 10 but don't use a bigger one. If you're working with a polycrystalline sample you can usually get away without having to use a selected area aperture. But I centered my area of interest on the flu cam with the stage and then I centered the aperture around that area so now I can go into diffraction mode and that's my selected area diffraction pattern. So one of the things you'll notice is I'm not perfectly on zone axis here. You can see the curvature of the intensity of the spots. So one of the tricks you can use here is just do some really slight stage moves because I know in the vicinity of where I am, I am close to an area where the zone axis alignment is perfect. So I'm just tweaking with the stage here with the joystick until I get good zone axis alignment like that. So you can see now I'm way off. Actually you can see a Lowy circle opening and then I can move back and now I'm right on the zone axis. So the next thing I'm going to do is center the direct beam on the flu cam. You'll notice I'm periodically turning my circular markings on the flu cam on and off kind of as needed. And then the next thing I'll do is insert 
the beam stop. So there's two options for this. You can do a full insert and with the beam centered on the flue cam that will block the direct beam completely. The other option you have is a partial insert. So these are just shortcuts from the flue cam toolbar. If you do a partial insert, you'll notice the direct beam isn't covered anymore. So you have to do a little bit of a shift to cover just the middle of the direct beam. And so that's what I'm gonna use for the rest of the video. So at this point, I'm going to navigate to the acquisition side of Velox. I'm gonna select that camera option from the toolbar and then configure view mode. So you wanna make sure that box next to disable shutter during imaging is checked. Um, I have the pixel resolution set at 1024 by 1024 with the lowest possible exposure time, which is about 50 milliseconds. And then I can start acquiring a live image. I'm not seeing the diffraction pattern because the viewing screen's in the way. So I'm going to retract the viewing screen and there's my diffraction pattern. So to record the diffraction pattern, we're going to use the series acquisition. So again, go to that camera tab, select the series tab. I'm going to use 2048 by 2048 for the pixels and then the lowest possible exposure time, which is about 80 milliseconds. Again, make sure that box next to disable shutter is checked. And then for number of frames, I like to start at about 20. Uh, that usually will give a nice signal to noise ratio when we acquire the, or produce, I should say, the ultimate pattern. So then we're gonna select series acquisition from the main toolbar. And just like that, it doesn't take very long. We've acquired the series. So then I'm gonna reinsert the viewing screen because we don't wanna expose the camera any more than we need to and head to the processing portion of Velox. So I just acquired 20 individual diffraction patterns with a short exposure time. So you can see individually they have a fairly poor signal to noise ratio. So what I can do is a frame integration. So if you go to processing from the pull down menu, select DCFI and then DCFI again, and you get a frame integrated diffraction pattern. You can see the marked improvements in the appearance signal to noise as a result of doing that. So the frame integrated pattern looks great, but you can do some additional digital processing. So if you go to the display settings tab and select histogram, you can adjust the black level gamma and white level to kind of get that last little bit of noise out of the image digitally. Usually just the black level and the gamma are sufficient in some combination to get that last little bit of noise out. And then you will have a very nice looking selected area diffraction pattern acquired with the SATA camera. So we have this nice selected area diffraction pattern, but what if you decide you want to acquire the same pattern at a different camera length? Well, the first thing you have to do obviously is change the indicated camera length. But if you do that, you want to make sure you're doing that on the flu cam and not while viewing the pattern on the SATA camera. So we are doing that right now, so we are safe. So I will retract the beam stop, turn those circular recognition marks back on, and then I will, in this case, decrease the camera length to settings. Procedure is the same whether you want to increase it or decrease it. Now, if you're working with polycrystalline materials and you don't have a selected area aperture, you may find that you need to refocus the pattern and readjust the diffraction stigmators when you adjust the camera length. If you're using a small selected area aperture like we're doing now, though, that usually is unnecessary. So we won't do that, but I will recenter the direct beam on the flu cam. And then I will reinsert my beam stop partially in this case again, and then shift the diffraction pattern over so that direct beam is just under the tip. And then I'll head back to the acquisition portion of Velox. I still have the live image going, but the main screen's in the way. So I will retract the main screen and I can use the exact same settings and I'll just do a series acquisition again. Again, very fast, put the main screen back in because we don't wanna expose the SATA camera more than we need to, and we'll go through and do another drift corrected frame integration. So again, processing DCFI and then DCFI. 
and we get a nice pattern again. And once again, you can do some digital enhancement. Go to that display settings and you can adjust the black level and or gamma level. All right, so when you're done collecting your selected area diffraction patterns, uh, obviously put the main screen back in, which we have already done in this case, and then you can retract the SATA camera. We don't want it inserted unless it's really being actively used. You can retract the beam stop from the FluCam toolbar, go back into SA mode, and then you can retract the selected area aperture. And that's all there is to it. So that completes the tutorial. So definitely it is possible to perform selected area diffraction with the SATA camera. It is a little more intensive than using the FluCam, but it can produce some really nice high pixel resolution uh, diffraction patterns that you can't really get with the FluCam. So thank you for your patience in me producing this and getting it out to you guys. Once again, I am happy to answer any questions you have. And uh, until then, I look forward to seeing you again when I do my next video. All right, take care, guys.